Yeah? Well, yeah, I'm on. <laughs> okay, it's good. Keep talking. Okay. Oh, la, la. Thanks, Karen. Okay, you want me to start singing? <laughs> Probably not. We're inside. No,
Good morning. We'd like to welcome you to our live stream worship presentation here at St. Paul's United Methodist Church. We're glad that you joined us for our service today. Um, we uh, are thankful to our, our crew that's here today, to our, our uh, tech team, and to Elaine Fink, our church musician. And today the message will be brought by my colleague in ministry, Pastor Karen Slusser. Uh, just a, a couple words as we start today. This is a day when we are also beginning in-person worship. If you would like to join us later, there is still an opportunity to sign up online. You can go to our website and see it there. We're going to have two services at 10 o'clock, one out here in the lawn right beside our sanctuary and one in our chapel in the woods, both, lim both limited to 25 persons. There is still room in each of those if you would like to register. And then tonight at 7.30, we're going to be having a service in our main parking lot that can handle up to uh, 100 persons socially distancing, wearing masks, which uh, is one of our requirements here. And uh, we invite you to come and join us for in-person worship. Um, we're glad you're here with us today, though, as we begin with a call to worship. How long, O Lord, how long must we hold onto this pain? How long will the aches of our souls have power over our hearts? How long must we bear the weights of worry, of guilt, of sorrow? Move beyond the past that holds us captive. We will move forward despite the scars. May God's steadfast love heal our spirits. May God's steadfast love help us discover the road to salvation. And if you are able to download the worship guide and would like to join me as you are at home in our opening prayer, let us pray. Holy One, in whom we bear our souls, we take comfort and courage in your presence. Through your love and light, we are able to explore what it takes to place our trust entirely in you. Help us lovingly put you before all else as we journey the corridors of uncertainty, knowing that your steadfast love shepherds us on paths unknown. Amen and amen. As we come to our time of prayer this morning and uh, an opportunity to talk a little bit about um, our, our worship, uh, we mentioned earlier our times of in-person worship here at St. Paul's. We also want to remind you, though, if you have offerings and you come to in-person worship, we're going to have a, a worship box there for you to put your offering in. We're not taking up uh, collections and passing things around. And if you're one of our live stream guests, we remind you that you can uh, give to support the work of St. Paul's as well as uh, the other work of the ministries of this church uh, electronically, either through our St. Paul's app or by setting up electronic giving with your bank. And we are thankful to all who have supported us in that way. We want to remind you, too, that if you are uh, one who receives our Friday emails, the prayer list is available there so that during our prayer time, we would invite you to uh, use that prayer list to guide you in your prayers. Um, we uh, also want to pray for our country right now as the second wave of the coronavirus seems to be hitting. I read an article this morning that it's the young who are getting hit with it now because as states began to reopen and folks began going out to the beaches and the bars and places where they would congregate, mostly many of our younger people under the age of uh, 40, uh, that's where the virus seems to be spiking now. So prayers for wisdom for our young people, prayers for wisdom for our governors and national leaders that they realize that the coronavirus is still with us. And, and just a word, as I said, I've uh, been saying to people all week, we're all tired of this. I don't know anybody who isn't tired of having to worry about wearing a mask and socially distance from people we love and not visit folks that we uh, care about in person. But viruses don't know that. This virus is no respecter of persons, and it's still among us, and so we have to do all of those things to keep one another safe and uh, to help keep one another well. So please join me in our prayers for all people to have wisdom from those who make the policy decisions all the way down to our own selves as we continue to do the right thing and to try to stem the tide of this virus. As we begin our prayer time this morning, um, I'm going to begin with a prayer uh, of dedication. We're doing this in all of our services, but at the 10 o'clock chapel in the wood service today, I think it's most significant because a, a few months back, uh, our church council voted to rename our chapel in the woods, which has always had that generic title, Faith's 
Chapel in the Woods after our late beloved administrative director, Faith Gear. Faith loved the chapel in the woods. She loved having Bible school classes there. She liked being a part of worship there. She was one of its staunchest promoters of our service in the chapel in the woods. So we're going to dedicate uh, that as Faith's Chapel in the Woods with this prayer at each service. And then I'll just lead us in a brief pastoral prayer and we'll, we'll share the Lord's Prayer together. Let us go before God. Gracious and holy God, we give you thanks and praise for the blessing of Faith Gear and the way she lived out her calling in her ministry with us at St. Paul's. As we dedicate and rename our outdoor chapel, Faith's Chapel in the Woods, we ask for the blessing of your Holy Spirit to continue to move in this space. We remember Faith Gear's energy, her passion for hospitality and justice and inclusion, her gift of welcoming people into ministry and community and helping them become part of things. We remember her zipping around, connecting dots, connecting people. We ask you to pour a measure of faith's spirit over faith's chapel in the woods so that everyone who worships in that space in particular and this congregation in general not only feels your grace welcoming them, but feels prompted to welcome others with your grace. We pray a blessing on Faith's children and family, and on all of us, her church family, and we thank you for the gift of memory, the gift of friendship in Christ, and the gift of your continuing call, which is handed down from generation to generation, sometimes too soon, but always infused with joy and vision and purpose and mission. We dedicate Faith's Chapel in the Woods in memory of Faith Gear to your glory and towards fulfilling of the purpose you are sending us toward as disciples of Christ, in whose name we pray. And Lord, even as we dedicate a space to Faith Gear, we are reminded of the ways that she attempted to connect all the dots and to connect people to people and then to connect people to God. Lord, let that be our legacy in her memory. Help us as disciples and witnesses of Jesus Christ to make those connections with others, to share the love and the joy and the grace of God with all the people we meet. And Lord, to be quick to offer a prayer for those friends and co-workers and neighbors and loved ones who share with us a need. Lord, help us not just say, oh, I'm so sorry, or, or oh, well, that's too bad but instead to say, would it be okay if, if I have you in my prayers? Would it be okay if, if I put you on my church's prayer list? And Lord, we do lift up all of those concerns that many of our members and friends have put on our St. Paul's prayer list. For privacy concerns, we don't mention them here in the live stream. But Lord, the good news is that they are written on your heart, even as they are written on a prayer list. We give you thanks, O oh God, that you hear our prayers on behalf of all of those who have physical and emotional needs. Lord, I pray a prayer of strength for those who feel weak right now. Some may be because of physical causes, but many because of emotional causes that are just energy-less. Lord, that reminds us of Faith and how much she was like a living battery who was constantly recharging those around her, sometimes to the point of exhaustion. But Lord, she had a noble cause, and we pray that you would energize us, that we might be lifted up like wings of eagles by your Holy Spirit, even as she was throughout her life. Lord, that we might energize others, that we might be a positive force for good and grace in the world. And we pray for all of the leaders of our nation and our states as they might make wiser decisions concerning COVID-19 and, and stemming the tide of this horrible virus and we pray for all people, but especially those younger ones who, who are just tired of this and, and feel it's time to take off the masks and just get back to life as usual. And yet there is the virus awaiting. We pray, O oh God, that you would intervene with wisdom as well as with your Holy Spirit power to help us beat back something that seems to be so harmful to so many. And we continue to pray for the families of those who have lost loved ones. And Lord, again... We thank you that you walk with us through these times and that we are not alone. Hear our prayers and our praises today as we offer them to you in the name of Jesus, 
who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And amen. This text we're going to share together today seems really appropriate after a prayer for God to recharge us and remembering those good memories of faith charging us up. What we're going to read is sort of like a locker room talk that Jesus gives to his disciples before sending them out into the towns and villages. Jesus is sending them as he sends us, with power to make a difference in the communities they will visit, with the power of truth to cast out unclean spirits, to bring healing, to be laborers in God's abundant harvest for the flourishing of everybody. Jesus sends them with his authority. They'll be stand-ins for Jesus himself, so much so that when they go somewhere, it's him going there. He sends them promising that some will receive them and their ministry. He sends them warning that some will reject them and what they have to say and what they have to do and the one they represent. He sends them the way Penguins coach Mike Sullivan sends the Penguins onto the ice. We just play. We go and do us. Some will like it. Some won't. Some will even try to draw you into a fight over what you're doing, but we just do what we do, says Coach Sullivan. And it's a Stanley Cup winning tradition for his team, we know, a couple times in a row. It might get rough out there, team, says Jesus, but we just play. We do us. He says, trust what, I ta- what I've taught you. The one who endures to the end will be saved. We, we just play. And Jesus' last word to these disciples before he sends them out of the locker room, before he has them all huddle up and go one, two, three, Jesus together before they go, it is to assure them that it won't be all bad, that there will be some who welcome them and their ministry that Jesus is sending them to do. So here this text is just a couple verses. It's that, that end of that locker room speech in Matthew 10. This is verses 40 through 42, and I'm reading from the Common English Bible. Those who receive you are also receiving me, and those who receive me are receiving the one who sent me. Those who receive a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. Those who receive a righteous person as a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. I assure you that everybody who gives even a cup of cold water to these little ones, because they are my disciples, will certainly be rewarded. So we could talk about prophets and righteous people and the people who receive them and their rewards. But what I really want to talk about this morning with you is these little ones that Jesus mentions when he says that whoever gives one of these little ones even a cup of cold water because they're my disciples, they'll be rewarded. See, I feel like we're living in a time and a moment that demands profound and world-shaking prophetic preaching and righteous action. Yet I know everything I have to say and do is totally inadequate in the face of the racism, the pandemic. Nothing I say or do is going to be enough, and I feel really small. It's not just the society-wide things that make me feel small. I feel small in the face of grief. I feel small when a loved one is hurting or sad in ways I can't comfort and soothe. I feel small when I can't even make all things right and just and peaceful in my own family, the people that live under my own roof, let alone the wider world. Can you relate to that? Do you sometimes feel small too? That's where God met me in this text this week. When Jesus says, anyone who gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones, 
one of these small ones because they're my disciple. Reading for like the millionth time about that cup of cold water, I finally remembered something that happened to me a couple weeks ago. I had gone to have a porch visit with someone who was going through some difficulties and about an hour into it, it was a real uh, sunny morning, about an hour into it, her husband quietly came outside and just handed each of us an ice cold water bottle and went back in the house. He wasn't part of the conversation. He just knew that we were sitting out there on the porch as disciples of Jesus together. And he brought us a cup of cold water. God met me through this text in that flash of memory to help me remember and help me hear that I'm a little one, that I'm God's little one, and it's okay to be small. Why is that so hard for us to believe that it's okay for us to be the little ones that we are? If you're feeling small, God is meeting you right here in the text with me. To, to say that Jesus loves his small, little, ordinary disciples, his inadequate disciples so much that he pours reward on anyone who so much as does a simple human kindness for them. I'm so glad to hear that encouragement to little disciples like me from Jesus because I'm having trouble identifying with the prophets who boldly proclaim what God is doing in this historic moment. I mean, don't get me wrong, I want to be prophetic. I wonder all the time, God, what does this mean? What are we going to allow this time to mean? Will it be a turning point towards a more equitable society? Will we lament to the point of sacrificially loving our neighbors as ourselves this time? How much lament will it take? Where are you, God, in all of this? God of justice and mercy, God whose purposes always come to pass. God, will you hold us in this uncomfortableness with your tough love long enough for us to bottom out and actually start using the power you give us to change and, and heal and resist evil and injustice and oppression in all their forms? See, I feel holy pressure and occupational pressure to be prophetic, but, but any prophetic words that come to me just feel too small. But with that water bottle handed to me as a little one, I feel like God is saying, it's okay. Go ahead and use your small words. They might be small, but they're from me. I feel like God is asking, do we really have to talk about the mustard seeds again? Jesus loves and sends his little ones. And I'm so glad to hear this encouragement to little disciples like me from Jesus because I'm also really not identifying with the righteous person in the text. Lord knows I'm trying, but I am agonizing over what the right things to do are. It was already hard for us to know what the right things to do are sometimes, but now with this coronavirus pandemic sort of glazing over everything, every decision feels slippery, balancing needs and the sliding scales of risk to the community, to ourselves, to our loved ones. Some of the decisions are straightforward, like wearing a face mask when we go out. But some of those decisions, like expanding our social circle, in my case, when I live with a 16 and 18 and 20 year old, as well as my husband and I, it's complicated to figure out what it means to be socially responsible and parentally responsible as we balance all those needs and risks. So I know we're not getting it all right. I bet maybe some of you can relate. When it comes to the work of dismantling racism, even trying to understand the scope of racism, trying to see more of what it means to be white in America compared to what it means to be brown or black in America, and feeling like that, that wanting to turn away from, from what I'm, I'm seeing and, and realizing that even the option of turning away from it is a white privilege, Stumbling through conversations or preaching, I know I'm not getting it all right. And now God is saying, as I receive that, that water bottle, that, that cup of cold water, to me, one of the little ones, 
I'm hearing God say, uh, yeah, it's true. That your small, small actions are not enough to solve the world's problems. They're not even enough to solve the, the problems in your own family, but they're worth doing those small righteous actions that you can do because Jesus is sending you to do them. Jesus loves and sends his little ones. God is reaching out to me in this text, helping me see that, that I'm one of the little ones, a floundering disciple of Jesus. And the good news is Jesus already knows that I'm a little one and is sending me anyways. And he doesn't just send me, he comes with me in, in such a way that, that if someone shows me a kindness, it's a kindness to him, that, that that's an opportunity for God's goodness to flow into the world. God's challenging me to trust that Jesus really does love me as a little one. If you're a floundering disciple of Jesus with me, if you're feeling small next to the mountains that we have to climb, if you're feeling thirsty for hope as your voice is, is cracking, your words are cracking in your throat, I hope that you can hear that love and encouragement in Jesus' message too. There's reward for those who receive a prophet's message as prophetic. There's reward for those who receive the actions of a righteous person as right. But the little ones are so loved by Jesus that if somebody even gives them a drink of water, there's a reward for them. That's how loved the small little ones are. <clears throat> That's how close Jesus is to them. So Jesus sends them. Jesus sends us. Jesus sends us small disciples to do big work, one little message or conversation at a time, one action at a time. And what we may do or say does feel small compared to the need, but we can go with confidence. We just play. We do us, trusting that we're sent by Jesus, who receives us and loves us even when others rejects us, who works all things together for good. Keep going in the work Jesus is sending you to do. Don't give up. When you feel small, don't give up. Trust Jesus already knows you're small and is sending you anyway. That's the message that God is speaking into me through this text this week. And that's the message that I share with you. Maybe God is meeting you there too. I really wanted to come up with some, some great story to close this message to make it a bigger message. But I didn't think of one. And I'm going to have to say that's okay. I'm going to trust Jesus to work it out so that the small message that I shared with you is enough. Amen.
Amen. I miss having multiple services in here so I can hear you a couple times on the same morning. I could listen to that a few times in a row. Thank you. So as we've been doing, um, we're going to pray a prayer for justice. We've been making this part of our, our worship liturgy together. And I, I found on the umcdiscipleship.org site, they're now posting daily pray- They're calling it Praying for Change daily prayers for anti-racism. And I was reading through those uh, prayers for this week. If you're interested, um, take a look. There's a new prayer posted every day. Um, But the one that was posted for uh, Friday, I guess it would have been, or Thursday, the 25th, um, just seemed to flow out of what I was trying to share with you in the message this morning. So I want to use this for our justice prayer today. It was written by Derek Weber. It's based on the hymn. It sort of takes the hymn, Breathe on Me, Breath of God, and um, flows from there and kind of goes back and forth from there. Let's pray together. Breathe on me, breath of God. I can't breathe, cry your people, with a knee of oppression on their necks. Fill me with life anew. Prophecy to the breath you declared to your prophet. Prophecy to the breath that I may love the way that you love. That these bones might live, these beaten, broken, and weary bones might live and love again and do what you would do. That they might stand as a mighty army, your mighty army, against the forces of hate. Breathe on me, breath of God. No, that we may stand as a mighty wind of change and hope, we dry bones of despair, until my heart is pure, and begin to distribute justice and healing in small ways, like drops of rain in a desert, until my will is one with yours. Because we are led by your presence, O Lord, who hasn't given up on us, to do and to endure. So we chip away at the walls we have built, though it takes more than any one of us have to give. Breathe on me, breath of God. Those made in your glorious image deserve to breathe fully and freely and in peace. So shall I never die. So eternity is experienced in the kingdom within, which we all can live and breathe, but live with you the perfect life so that each life, each precious life that matters, is woven into yours for all eternity, in this life today, right now, and into the tomorrows that only you hold for us. Let this be so. Amen and amen. Our closing hymn that Elaine is going to uh, play for us in a moment, um, if you have a hymnal at home, is number 560, Help Us Accept Each Other. And I want to read the first verse, the words of the first verse of this hymn um, by way of benediction today. Help us accept each other as Christ accepted us. Teach us as sister, brother, each person to embrace. Be present, Lord, among us and bring us to believe. We are ourselves accepted and meant to love and to live. Go in peace. Go in joy. Amen. Mm-hmm.